face. This is our dream. You know, Dr. Spock, <laughs> he has a three court. This is a very nice device. It makes diagnosis, it makes treatment. Star Trek it was a very wonderful series. But now, sometimes the only thing to see the under chamber, under segment, the reality is a slit lamp. <laughs> we have the possibility to have the UVM and we improve our health to make a better examination of under segment. Okay, let's present you this new device. This new device is the absolute, is the top of the uh, the top of the line of Quantel Medical. This is the new machine. I got it in the uh, and this is the first quality, the best quality bio, uh, not, uh, echography that I ever have. Everything and inside had the possibility to make UVM. This is the machine that had that. This is absolute standardized a mode biometry uh, by 11 megahertz, B mode 15, and another very interesting probe. This is the 20 megahertz five ring. If we have time, I can I would like to show you some images that I got with this. 20 megahertz. And we have the UVA linear 50. And this is very nice because you look in the aviso that you have this screen, and this is a little bit different. Let me show you. You have this part. This is very comfortable, very elegant screen, and very easy to see what happened in this screen. This is the main part of the machine. It's a compact machine. I mean, this is. The computer screen is all together here, and all the probes more than the probes. And then you have this. This is the absolute, the new machine. This the UVM probes. In this case, you have the 50 megahertz probe. I call it a structural or anatomic because it has a very very nice resolution. And this is improved resolution. It's a linear probe. This is very important to do UVM. You must do UVM with the best machine. If you want to drive a car and you're in Germany and there is no speed limit in the highway, you 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 is has has no it's no way to 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 drive an old car. You must use a very a very uh, fast car, a very a very uh, modern and racing car if it's possible. It's the same. This is the best technology. Why? Normally, you have sectorial technology. It's a sectorial. You send the echoes, but when the echoes go to the cornea and the anterior segment, they came back. Not all the echoes goes to the transducer back. Most of them, because it's a spherical surface, you lose this. And because the, the, the probe is only have this movement, yeah, the only way you can get a perpendicular image is just in the center. In the peripheral, you have distortion. This is the sectorial uh, UVM probe. You have, on the other hand, the linear technology that because it moves, yeah, you get back all the information and you receive in your transducer the information back because this machine is moving linear. You are always perpendicular to the surface that you want to get. And then you get the best echo because you are always perpendicular. Okay. This is linear technology. Very, very important to do the best examination. There is some distortion, yes, of course, but not enough to make a very nice measurement. You can get good images, but sometimes images are not enough to do very good measurements with your probe. It's the axial resolution is 35 microns, lateral resolution 60, and the area is an area for 16 millimeter. You have one shot for the whole anterior chamber. And the focus could be for 9 to 11 millimeters depth focus. And you have an open probe that you 
this membrane or you can use clear scan. You will see. This is the clear skin. The clear skin is easy to use, it's comfortable for the patient. I don't know, I think it's good. I, I prefer sclera shells, but because this is uh, discardable, and it, in, in our countries, so developing countries, uh, it, it, the cost is high, especially if you are in the hospital. And you can make, uh, uh, you can uh, sterilize the, 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 the sclera shell. But now with the pandemic, we were thinking about <laughs> to use this device in every patient separate because the risk of the COVID with, uh, with uh, tears is very high. And the clear scan allows to you to examine the patient in sitting position. This is good. Some patients, you can lie down the patients because they are very old, they have problems in the back or whatever. And you have, is it safe? You have no corneal liberation. There's a little pressure over the enough. It all depends how how is feel the membrane. Please do not feel so hard the clear scan in order to not make so many pressure, especially in patients with trauma. This is the image that we get with the UVM. Look at this very clear. Then the second is not so clear. The new, the new probes this is the old, uh, the old 50 megahertz. All means the last year. <laughs> the new one is much better because of the correction of this and enhanced signal in the area. And then again, you have a very nice picture of the apex of the cornea. Why? When you are perpendicular, you have very brilliant, bright signals. What happened with the ultrasound beam? When you are go this area, you are parallel, and then this curve, you have a distortion. And again, you go to the center, and again, you are perpendicular. Look, again. Normally, it's minimal, but in the cornea, in the cornea, you be able it's not so good as OCT, I tend to tell you the truth. Uh, but normally, we can see the cornea with the slit line, we can see the cornea with OCT, we can see the cornea with whatever. For us, more important is to see the angle, to see the iris, and behind the iris, that you can't see, can't see with optical methods. And what happened with ultrasound beam or UVM in the iris, the filary body in the lens. Look what happens. In that case, most of the time, 100%, 99%, you're perpendicular. And then you get a very, very nice image of the iris of the ciliary body angle and etc. Because you are using a linear probe. If you have a sectoral probe, then you get some problems because the only way, the only time you are perpendicular is just in the middle. Yeah? When you are in the sectoral probe, you receive a cosinus of angle as a reception of the egg in the periphery. With the linear probe, you are sure that you will receive the right image of the periphery. And look at this, this is very nice. A GPS inside the probe. You don't need anymore to have the rice ball to make the positions. You don't need to understand, even in B mode, that's the reason I want to show you the other presentation, the accelerometer. What is an accelerometer? This is a small sensor on B mode and UVM. And the, it shows to you the position of the probes in the space and the direction of beam in the eye diagram. Very, very interesting. Look, if you make, if you move, it moves. And you can see if you, your mark is here, you are sure at what time are you doing your examination. Very nice because 
it showed you the direction of the use being in the eye chart. It helped all the doctors. It's a very nice educational tool for beginners and it allows to follow a preloaded protocol. If you have a protocol to make the examination of glaucoma or retina or whatever, you have it because you only make this correlation between your probe and the image in this tool. There are a lot of attachments, okay, here and here. Drinking water for contact to the eye. Distilled water, you want to fill the 50 megahertz probe. Membranes, scleral shells, silicone, that I like it very much. And also they have uh, um, an order. And also the spectrum, you can use the spectrum also. And you have the clear scan. In the very beginning, in the very beginning, the clear scan went like this. I have some of them at home, at the office, just to remember me that everything changed. Now we have this ring, this very elastic ring, and this is the new clear scan. Please, I don't know what happens with the power of the electricity in your country, but in mine, I should protect my machine using this unit in order to avoid peaks in this. In the screen, in the screen is very nice. You can see everything here. You can see right eye, left eye. Let's see what happened. You have the upper part is the navigation tool and exam parameters, the probes, the right temporary images on the right eye, the save images, which is also another actions, another actions here. This is very nice to see. Okay, again, and you have a big screen and uh, you can come. Then you can choose which um, probe you can select. In UVN, you select the linear 50, and you can select also the focus. You can focus it in the ciliary body, or you can focus more deeper in the lens in order to make the examination as you prefer. Then you have the probes. In my case, I have the B15. The standard the BA biometry, you have the standardized also, the B15, the B25 rings, and the linear 50. And in the linear 50, I can choose for auxiliary body focus or focusing lens. And then I have the parameters of the, the right eye and the left eye can choose it. I can rectify OD to or left eye or to right eye or vice versa. And I can show or not show the accelerometer diagram. Then this is the accelerometer diagram. And when I put it, the machine reacts immediately and show me the position. This is an axial, longitudinal, <laughs> like as longitudinal axial yeah, with the ciliary body, a focus on ciliary body, the linear fit. Ciliary body. Of Ora Serrata, you can change it. And if you put the sun in the eye, you must calibrate first. Then the machine show you exactly the position of the sun. There is the probe. There is no way to lose that position. You have the pedal action even in the in the screen. You have the gain. You can add the vector C. You make a full or comparative screen of two images. Let's see. You have if you push here. You have the vector here. Then if you put this, this is the comparison between two images and then the full screen, the two images. You have an actual images and anterior images a one day or three days later with light, without light, with uh, pressure, with, with uh, a test, without a test. Whatever you want, you can compare for right now or for past if you have record or save it is in your machine okay you have a question because you have the, the, the bottom tools and they are different tools the general tools the tools for glaucoma one filters and look this is prior to make the ultra the uvm you must know that because it's a very helpful uh, caliper number one you can have a measure of an area, the number two. You can 
position, locate a marker in the screen with number three, and you can make an angle measure with number four. And, the, and you can use the film. For example, you have a tumor in the iris. We I use the caliper, number one, I can make C1 and C2, and I have one diameter and other diameter as, as easy as possible. Then, if I want to look the area of the tumor, I can make this, and I have 1.33 square millimeters in this case. I know this dimension of the tumor. And in the next examination, I can compare it and look if it has a growing of the lesion or not. Then I can mark a special part of the tumor. This is mobile. I can make the angle also, in this case 40, it's an open angle. They are very interesting tools that you can interact with your images. And you have different filters, color, negative. Sometimes if you want to see something special, sometimes the scleral spur, you can change, you can play with your image. You can use negative emboss, for example, to see differentiations between the sclera and ciliary body and also the iris or the edges of the images sometimes to make investigation. They are, this is, you don't use it in a normal examination, but if you need to make some difference, you can do it without any problem. The second part is the tools for glaucoma. And this is for me the most important part because I am a glaucoma specialist. Then you have the lens bolt, the angular opening distance, the trabecular iris angle, the iris thickness, the angular resist area, and the trabecular iris space area. What is lens ball? It's to measure the perpendicular distance of anterior displacement, displacement of the lens. The lens go further, forward, yeah? and goes to the anterior chamber uh, using a baseline in between two scleral spurs. Then you must identify scleral spurs to me to know how forward is the lens and how interact with the iris, with the angle, with the cornea, with the anterior chamber, etc. We'll see you later in phacomorphic glaucoma. Another tool is the uh, 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 the distance, the opening, the angle opening distance is the measure, exactly the measure for opening just in front of the trabecular member. If you identify the scleral spur and you count 500 or 750 microns forward or anterior to the scleral spur, this is the place where the trabecular is. And this is the amplitude of the It's more important than the angle because iris is not always a flat surface. Sometimes it is very bumpy. And you don't know this area is very, very important. Also, you have the angle and you have the opening distance. Another tool is the iris thickness. It allows to you to measure the thickness of the iris near the angle and in the periphery. And then you can see there are some very pigmented thick iris that by themselves, by dilatation for midriasis, they can close the angle just when they retract to the root of the iris. Very interesting because also if you want to perform an iridotomy, Sometimes you have problems to maintain in some patients, and you can look for the thinnest part of the iris to perform the test, or to look what happens when there is a, 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 escotop, a escotopic life uh, factors in order to correlate with the angle closure. You have also the a, a, a area angle angular area of recess and measure the area of the triangle between the angular resist and the iris and the cornea. Yeah? And it's very important in plateau iris. 
And also you can see exactly the area that is in contact just in front of the trabecular meshwork and this part of the angle. And this is the TISA. And it measures the trapezoidal area between the iris and the cornea, the iris and the cornea, exactly eh, eh, in front of this area without consideration of the angular recess. Okay, let's see the examination technique. Again, very ergonomic, the patient in the same position. There is, and we are very happy, but we don't need to use the for immersion. We can use the clear scan of the scleral shell. And this is live, real time examination. Okay. Oh, one moment, please. Let's see to go. Okay. This is the 50 linear with the all clear scan. This is the way that you perform without anything. Look, you know, the clear scan, anesthesia, the patient looked to the area that I want. Virtual scan, similar to what we do. And at the same time, you are getting in the screen the real time examination in between two lines. And if you press or you not press, you can be in focus. Let's see. We will see that when we change the screen. And then, let's see. Okay. There are two lines, and in between the two lines is the focus. And you are looking here the iris, the ciliary body, the cellula, very nice, and also the cornea. But look, the cornea is much, much better as the exterior. If you want to see the cornea, you must go a little bit deeper, and you can make measurements, sulcus to sulcus. In this case, you can make the scleral spur in this position also, anterior chamber for the endothelium to the anterior capsule. You can make the measure for the lens thickness. Look, very, very, so you can see the posterior surface of the, of the lens, and you have a complete method to make every measure. Also, the angle, you can make the angle this way, all the tools, and you can go through the cornea, decrease the gain, and you can, you can make a pachymetry also in these cases. This is very, very friendly to do this with the Abiso. Now with the Absolute is much better, but the Absolute is a new machine and looks so easy to make the examination. You can use a sterile shelf, different shapes, or clear scan. This is the old one, the new one is the green one. And look, this is with a sterile shelf. It's so easy, the patient has, the, I, have, I have those uh, uh, silicone uh, scleral shells, you put some drinkle, drinking water, then you put with the membrane the 50 megahertz, and at the same time, you are performing the examination in real time. Look, the green dots, the lines are the focus. You can depress or move, or you can change the perspective just moving the probe in this situation and you can ask the patient to look down to look up to look nasally to look uh, temporal we will see in the next slides what happened okay that it's exactly like the demo there is a position of the mark the mark in this case shows the right side of the screen always uh -huh. Look, the ultrasound always goes from left to right, always. Yeah? And when I get this image, I know that the pro, the marker is facing this part. I mean, if I put the marker facing nasal, this is nasal. If I put it up and down, I mean, in the other side, this is temporal. If I put the, 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 the marker up, up, <laughs> in the right side, this is so easy. I can do that. And then this is the focus is in the area between the dotted green lines. Look, when I go up, 
and in focus in the lens, the, the sonula, the ciliary body, the iris. And if, if I go down, I can go the corner. I go up, I, I miss this focus here, but I am the perfect focus in the center. But if I go a little deeper, I get focus in this area. It all depends what you want to see. Okay. Probes, white marker, always nasal or superior, the same case of B mode examination. The marker corresponds right of the screen, always. You can use cornea, probe on cornea, clear scan, or interstellar shell. And a very good uh, remark right now, the new 50. The one who has is this this year they, they they show it this year they launched the the new pro this year. You can also make UBN through the lead in young babies in 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 neonats in a, in, in part to out congenital pro uh, congenital problems because the intensity of the signal is much better. In adults, it's not possible. You must use the immersion. But in, in, in child, you can do it very, very easy with a lot of gel through the lead. Okay, in this case, instead of the beam mode, we don't avoid the lens. And we start with the axial scan, axial horizontal, then longitudinal, the tree, etc. So I will show you with this is too much for, for understand. I, I can show you some images. Yeah, and you can also the intermediate position for the transversal and longitudinal. You ask the patient to look a little bit opposite to the examined area to have more space. Okay, let's see. Okay, first scan. This is right eye. The first I always I make my own protocol. I begin with horizontal nine to three. The patient look straight ahead. Then this is tree, this is nasal, this is the temporal angle. I, this is my first approach, first approach. Then I ask nine and one on the left side, three in the right. I ask the patient, please look to your nose. In the, in the right eye is one direction, and the left eye is another. And because he's moving his eye or her eye to nasal. It shows me the temporal angle. This is my second shot. Yeah? Look first nasal, and I have nine. I scan in nine hours. I ask the patient to look to temporal side. Then I'm, ex I'm making the examination three. Then I have the nasal angle in this case. It's easy to understand, and if you make it properly and you make it very, very uh, regular or similar, it's no problem. Then I turn the probe vertical, always nasal, always up. And then in the vertical, again, you can see the same image, but it's six in the left side and 12 in the right side because the marker is facing 12. Then this is the vertical, and the patient looks straight ahead. Six is on the left side, 12 is in the right side because the mark. And I ask the patient to look up, uh, superior. Then I make the examination for six hours. Then I ask the patient to look down, and then I examination the superior angle, the 12th. Hour. I make the same examination using the same principles when I make all the intermediate position, always facing this mark up or not. So we will see. When I go down, I don't go down. I put my marker up and then again and again. Then I am always, when I look, to the right side of my image, I know exactly where I am. Okay. What do you use horizontal and vertical action to see the anterior chamber depth measurement, the distance angle to angle or sulcus to sulcus, 
angle to angle if you are certain that you do have some iris cloud, integral lens, artisan, or whatever you want. And sulcus to sulcus if you must, you want to uh, put in the surgery an intraocular contact lens or a phacic lens, or you want to make another measure. But this is the best way to plan the surgery in an intraocular contact lens. And this is the best way to be sure that you are doing properly to put an uh, iris claw intraocular lens. Then if you are a surgeon, this is a tool that you must have to make your surgery by success. Even if you make the you make the operation and you have any doubt uh, about what happened with the lens, the intraocular lens on intraocular contact lens, if you have situation, you use this horizontal and vertical action. Also, you can use for lesions of anterior chamber, lens trauma, etc. Longitudinal, as you have seen, is more uh, important to angle measurements, tumor of the anterior segment and filary body, depression of iridotomy, pars plana, and even peripheral retina. Transversal, it's very nice to see the ciliary process in another way to do that. Tumors and cysts of the anterior segment and ciliary body and within the ciliary process. Let, you will see the images. You can also, if you are a glaucoma surgeon, you can see the drainage devices, valves. You can see also the tubes into the eye. You can see all the shunts, the pass, the side pass, or whatever you want to see. Also the filter and blebs with this approach. Again, make always this anterior chamber measurement. Anterior chamber, normally 3.3. Lens, normally, it all depends the age, 3.55. And the angle normally for it open. You can see the what is the main vantage of UVM 15 megahertz. You can see the area beyond the iris that you can reach with any optical device, ciliary body, sulcum, pars plana, sin sonula, leg capsule posterior. Optic device don't reach this area proper. And for what is the UV used for and how useful is it? For glaucoma, cornea, corneal media opacities, tumors, anterior trauma, congenital disease, complicated cases, refractive surgery. And I make, because I make a lot of glaucoma, then I, I, I was answer, uh, wondering what is my main reason for consultation for IUBN in my daily practice? And I, I make glaucoma, and the combination between UBN and glaucoma is perfect. I use 20. Almost 30% determination of angular closure type. 14, 15% non functioning iridotomies. And you try to open the angle to try to make the anterior chamber deeper, but you made the iridotomy and you can't do that. You can look what had happened. It was a pupillar block, was not, was a fused plateau, was a tumor, what a cyst, whatever. Very, very frequent and nowadays. Frequent as normal is women over 50, 40 years, hyperopic with narrow angle, to discard phacomorphic angle closure. And also the risk of angle closure, the risk on uh, acute glaucoma, angle closure glaucoma. Then discard eus plato, corneal opacities, and the other ones. Most most uh, circa 50 percent 60 percent is for glaucoma in my hands but if you are a surgeon it can change it if you make small pupils make surgery in small pupils is a big problem tumors if you are oncologist ocular oncologist if you make uveitis also if you want to see capsule integrity and there is another possibility uvn is very powerful too let's see some pathology in cornea. Sometimes we see that patient that come to us and we can see there is no lens here, there is synechia, edema, leucoma, there is a vitreous coming inside, angle closures, a lot of things that you can't see with another method, even with optic. Detachment of decimate membranes, 
you can it in refractive surgery in order to get the position of the sulcus to sulcus. Sorry for this is in the Spanish. Uh, you can see normally they ask you to make white to white, but this is proof that white to white is not the real distance to make the intracular the ECL uh, insertion in the eye. Why they don't change it? They know that. There's a lot of papers talking about, but you know, it costs a lot of money to change the dossier that they use for the FDA. And they have approved the dossier using white to white. What? They should change it if it works? No, they don't change because it costs a lot of money. Even though we know that it's not real, white to white in some eyes is bigger than sulcus to sulcus. In another, is is not longer, but it's shorter. The real measure to implant in faci lens is to measure sulcus to sulcus. Okay, let's go. Is a sulcus to sulcus. If all the surfaces are perfect aligned, you can measure this, no problem. If you see that there is no correlation between the cornea, anterior capsule, and the posterior capsule is displaced, please do not measure the sulcus to sulcus distance. It's not correct. With OCT, anterior segment OCT, you can't see beyond the iris. With if you want to know the refractive surgery, the post-operative IOL location, you must use the uh, UBN. Look, there are different distances. Eh? Look the white to white. Look the sulcus to sulcus. Look the angle to angle. There is no relationship and it can change also because of the geometry of the eye. Also, if you are surgeon and you use to lose artisan measurement, you don't only want to know what is the distance for this in the, in the central part of the anterior chamber, but normally you can do by biometry. But you also want to know what the distance for the edges of the lens, and you want to know where is the position of the clips or the clowns in the iris. And even though, if there is any contact, with the angle or whatever. It's, this is an intracular lens in situ, in back. Look the distance between the lens and the iris. It's very important to see. This is a IOL in back, but very deep. Yeah? And even it makes a myopic, sorry, an hyperopic shift because of this position. This is dislocate a tilt integral length. One is in the anterior chamber, the other is just down the ciliary body contacting the pars plana. You can see it only with UVM, you can't see it with OCT. Another displacement, one is in this in the back, and the other is in the sulcus. You can see the tilt in the prismatic effect that you get with the lens. Look, this is an angle closure due to the optic that is bad position and you rotate because you have here capsule enough to make a rotation of the lens. This is very important if you are surgeon to make this. Also, this is a work that we make with accumulative intraocular lenses and then a glaucoma. You can be popular, you can describe very well popular block and you know that in this case, the iridotomy is useful if you pressure behind the iris and you, 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 there is no the iris there is no pupillary block if you make iridotomy it works and the angle is open but if you have another condition plateau iris another uh, constitutional notion of the of the angle there is no reason to make an iridotomy Look what happened the pupillary block before Jack laser and after the, the same eye. Yeah? Then look the opening of the angle, the communication, 
the stop of the bowing of the air because the pressure is here, the change of the uh, contour of the iris and the position of the iris. Very interesting in glaucoma, the UVM. Also, if you perform plastic, sorry for the Spanish, uh, you can change this area, uh, the same patient, and you can, these numbers sounds to be a little quantity, but hydrodynamic, they are very important in the angle. You can also see angle closure due to suffusion of the uh, choroidal uh, anterior, or uh, iris plato, anterior chamber depth, the iris profile is flat, the root of the angle is angle, the iris root is angled, the ciliary wall is forward, anterior side, one third, more than one third, and there's a sulcus collapse. This is an iris complete. Yeah. Sometimes when you perform conioscopy, you don't see any element, but there is a place. The iris plateau is not, no, not a bad boy. It can help sometimes in the opening of the angle. Facomorphic glaucoma. This is for me the most important uh, area that you can use. I personally use a lot of this in my practice. Look at You have the iris profile, anterior contact with the lens. You see the angle closure. You see the, a big lens. And inner lens pockets with filled with uh, liquid. And they are waiting for you to make the operation and get the break of the capsule. Let's see. Look the lens ball. The lens, there's a line, the sclerous pull to sclerous pull. And this is a line for this base line to the anterior the capsule. Then a second line to the endothelium. If this, Volt is more than one third of this distance. This is a phacomorphic, glaucoma, a phacomorphic case mechanism that 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 make possible angle. I'm not talking about angle glaucoma. I'm talking about the risk to develop glaucoma, uh, angle angle closure glaucoma. And then I realize. Let's see what happened. What was it? To this program. I have the idea that we are waiting too much to make operations in angle closure. Uh, the amount of blindness due angle closure glaucoma is the same that open angle glaucoma or uh, primary open angle glaucoma, even though the the, the quantity of cases of angle closure glaucoma are less. They are less, but they have more blindness problem than the normal glaucoma. Let's see. This is a patient, 48 years old. She came 21 December with hypertensive crisis with edema, strias in, stria in, in the cornea, Eusinechia, no cataract, a normal lens, but big for this anterior chamber. So anterior chamber is 188. That means it's a normal lens, but it's too big for this eye. Hyperopic patient, woman, more than 40, hyperopic, normal lens, no cataract, and a hypertensive crisis, glaucoma, cl angle closure due the lens a long time because they are sneaky they're the people who goes to the movie and get headaches just because the dilation of the pupil and they are making episodes of closer of the, the angle we make the operation look one month later look it's a big anterior chamber but this is still sneaky here what has happened they wait a lot they were waiting for a long time all the people say, no, you have the risk, but we don't do anything until you have a big cataract, and then the complications are, 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 are worse. Yeah? Then 
in this case, because we operate because what look the, the cornea it's, it's different, quite different. The demo and without, and we must operate this case as emergency. Emergency. <clears throat> One month later, like this, and the problem was the angle was not open. We get a lot, a big anterior chamber in the post surgery, but it was not enough. And look, this is with Iron Master. We can see the position of the lens in the post pre uh, same patient pre-operative and post-operative. Look the, how deep is the anterior chamber. You can imagine the angles also. If I make the, the reflection, what happened this is that kind of patient? Look, this is a 445 lens. One 67, and the angle is almost clo almost close. We have a high hyperopic correction. For me, the risk was present. Yeah? I preferred to do a PACO in a soft cataract than a PACO in a hard rock cataract. And I can solve the problem for the refraction. At the same time, I solve the risk. Okay, they are raised in the cataract surgery, yes. But if you wait until this cataract will be harder, bigger, it can close, you can get a, a closer of the angle. And there is a big, a lot of problems with this. And then make the operation. I made the operation, I correct, I put a multifocal lens. One year later, I was very happy. Yeah? Look the line for the bolt here, because it was in advance with any cyanicia. Look, this is a very shallow angle, very close, similar clock, but this was impossible. I don't know how she can she can uh, make filtration in this area. Okay, then <clears throat> look before and look after the surgery. The risk, is very low. She solves this refractive, problem, you know, the refractive situation, but very happy. His sister, uh, the sister uh, came with the same case, but uh, uh, even more close. We make the same operation and we release the angle closure and we, call, we, we make the solution of this. If Look, what I learned, why should one wait from performing a surgery with a difficult cathode case later, with a very shallow anterior chamber, with a dense nuclear, anterior and posterior synechia, floppy iris, back cornea, myorrhesis, corital detachment, if we can go in advance. And the most important, if nobody worries about FACO refractive surgery, I mean, people that make the surgery just because they don't want to use the glasses. So why being with glaucoma preventive surgery? That's in my question. I make a lot of discussion. One day we can discuss. There are other causes, ciliary cysts, ciliary body cysts. You must think about the multicystic disease, not only in the eye, but in the brain and the, the uh, uh, lungs in the uh, in, in every place in the uterus in the ovaries. This is lipoid corneal degeneration, also with angle closure. You can see the trabeculectomy very well, every part of the trabeculectomy. You can also look for the expressions or other filtration device with UVM. You can see what happened with intraocular inter contact lens and the iridotomy and the exact position of the lens because you make prior the surgery, the right measurement. You can also see the bulbs, uh, the, in this case, the amet. You see the cataract, for example, dense cataract, very dense cataract with inter intraocular liquid collection. Uh, look. It leads sometimes to this. You are you, you are operating the cataract. You have the triple blue. Then you pick. 
and you get the Argentinian flag, and well, it's a catastrophic change during the surgery. And you can avoid that using your UVM just before to make the operation. You don't have this Argentinian flag syndrome. Also, you can make the cataract to see what happened with the ciliary body. This is the touch or not. A Morganian cataract also is possible to see. Mm -hmm. Again, no, sorry. A Morganian cataract in a IFEMA, lenticonus posterior, Marfan or solar rupture under Sinicia, subluxated lens, reabsorbent lens, displaced lens in anterior chamber, right? tumors in the ciliary body that cause cataract. It's very nice to see with UVM. Elsnick pairs that make angle closure in some patients. Cyclic membranes with or without the attachment of the ciliary body. You can see it very, very clear. It helps to you to plan your surgery and capsule routine, phacronophylactic glaucoma. Now, there is a pandemia from avastinitis. <laughs> All the people want to make avastin in the office, in every place. And if they don't know, they can hit the posterior capsule and make a phacronophylactic with the post by rupture of the posterior capsule. And we can see it. Be careful. Tumors, melanoma, cystic melanoma on the other segment, cystic melanoma again, conjunctival melanoma that you can see that there's no access to the anterior chamber. Also with the 15 megahertz, you can see very well the limits of the lesion. You can plan your surgery. Also in dermal lipoma, you can plan the surgery if you want to go with a corneal graft in this case, because it's very deep, and you can get a very thin cornea in post-operative surgery. On in this infective epidermoid carcinoma, UVN is a must. Look at this case. I can see here that cornea, my sclera, is clear. There is no infiltration. And then when I make the plan of the surgery, is different. And this escamosis is totally different. Even it looks a little bit uh, shorter or little than the other one, it's more infiltrative. Can you face this surgery? You can solve this surgery without UVM? I think no, because with UVM, you have the idea that the tumor is not in the anterior chamber, is not in the cornea, and this is the final result. It's because you perform a UVM prior to the surgery. Also for tumors, UVM is better, much, much better than OCT. They say it is easier. <laughs> Sometimes easy things are not complete things. Trauma, you can see different features of trauma. You can see different situations, vitreous inside the anterior chamber or another conditions. <coughs> This intercalar staphyloma or parocular cyst. <coughs> Again, intercalar staphyloma. Body tumors already, so talked about that. Angle closure for white tumors. Anterior uveitis, ear shafting because the lens is very anterior and it shaft with the iris on even contact the ciliary body and it causes. You are surgeon of cataract, and sometimes you have an anterior uveitis without any cause. If you don't perform the UVN, you can't see this problem. Also, cyclic membranes again, with or without ciliary body attachment. This with particularly uh, membrane and ciliary body detachment. Congenital disease, just for the very end, syndrome. a very old movie, but this is still useful, with all the compounds of the Peters syndrome. Another one, also very old, accent for the rear. You can see the Schwalbe line, the embryotoxin, 
and the trabeculo-iridocorneal dysgenesia. Axel Ferriga again, Bart and Brain. And the very end of my presentation, you, if you in your practice, you put plaques in the lagrimal duct and you suspect they are lost or they are inside the canalicula, you can make it very well with the UVN. Not only that, but also with the 50 these cases, the next to the canalicula next to the lacrimal sac, common canaliculus, the opening of the canaliculus and the lacrimal sac and the origin of the canaliculus. Very nice to demonstrate the lacrimal system and also if the plaques are there or not. Okay, sorry because it takes a lot of time, but I want to thank you. Tell you my mother language. Gracias for your attention.